really designed the soaring. A lovely long glide it's got, which is basically how they get around. Um, they go up soaring using thermals, currents of warm air, uh, in a bit to gain height. Once they're up nice and high, they then pay a massive area of ground with them. Good lad. Did you like and try and spot nice easy food. Uh, dead food, ideally, carrion, sort of dead animals. Uh, which they can feed off. They're not much of an active hunter. They will take snakes and lizards and small mammals, but nine times out of ten, uh, they'll feed on sort of carrion, which is obviously dead animals. Uh, they've got a few special features which enable them to do so. Uh, one is their big broad wings. Uh, more air passes over the top of the wing than underneath, thus creating lift. And by using thermals, uh, and they can gain height and high altitude. They actually hold the record of Rupel's Griffin Vulture for the highest flying animal of all time. Uh, and that's at 36,000 feet. R1 probably holds the record for the lowest flying vulture of all time. <laughs> it's just a few feet. Uh, but nevertheless, we'll get him nice and fit. Alex has actually been an extra in a film company for seven, the first seven years of his life. It's very important with birds of prey that they develop all of their flying muscles, which are absolutely huge. Their pectoral muscles weigh, or can weigh, up to 25% of the bird's total body weight. Um, and if these aren't developed within the first sort of nine to 12 no, months, no. Um, they have a lot of muscle wasting. Alex here didn't really have to do a lot of work. All he had to do was look pretty and sit pretty in front of the camera and not really exert himself. Uh, this is the first year he's actually been flown free uh, here at Bert Drum and we've trained him up. Um, anyway, a few other features about him. You know, he's got a particularly tall head and neck. That's not to make him look sort of cute in an ugly kind of way. Uh, it serves them for good purpose. The more feathers they have on their neck, uh, the more sort of, well, the better ability bacteria uh, and sort of nasty hosts can sort of uh, stay on their neck. So they have a nice bald neck, they can keep it relatively clean. Yeah, it's nice and easy. But if you notice at the base of his neck, he does have a nice white plume. Um, which is there, purely and simply, so when it gets cold, he can pull his neck in and keep it nice and warm. So this is his last flight in this direction. And then we'll go back and pop him away. Um, right. last flight to you. So we'll give uh, Alex a, a round of applause for doing so well. And we're going to run straight back into the room. One second, two, two. <laughs> Come on, Alex. He's knackered. Yes. Still out. <laughs> 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 My colleague's going to run a bit. Hopefully. Hopefully.